So here we are. Um, it is the 20th of July 2013. Uh, happy Moon Landing Day and Happy Fairlight Landing Day, as uh, as you can see here. We now have in Failed Muso Studio a CMI Series Three. So um, let's let's take a look. Um, here is. Uh, the monitor, it's, uh, it's a small affair. Um, I'd say that's around 10 inch. Is that 10 inch? I don't know. I haven't. I don't know the exact spec of that one. Um, it's been cleaned. We've cleaned it up um, from from when we got it last night. And there's this uh, kind of speckled effect in the paintwork. Um, and we're not quite sure. We're pretty certain that's supposed to be there, but uh, it's it's. Kind of strange looking, um, and you know I'm a child of the '80s, and I don't remember things looking quite like that. Um, but it's a uh, it's proper CRT, uh, all powered via the mainframe, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, as you can see, genuine uh, Series Three monitor. Um, we're, we're not sure if this works yet. Um, we hope to give this a test fairly soon uh, once we've got uh, most of the components back in. Um, but we are aware that this uh, will work with a modern day TFT uh, monitor so that's good and because the Series 3 didn't use the touch screen like the Series 2 then um, there's no kind of fogging or anything so it might it might still work quite well um, here is the alphanumeric and of course as I just said the Series 2 had the touch screen the Series 3 has the tablet and here is the pen and that works on there and as you can see its previous owner has left um, his labels on here, Mr. Stanley. Thank you very much. Um, and we're not taking those off, uh, not just yet, unless uh, unless we decide to. But I think that um, it's provenance and uh, kind of tells us where it came from. So it's just a, a standard kind of QWERTY keyboard, but with some uh, variations. Uh, certainly over here, uh, these are CMI specific type keys. Um, I've yet to fully read the manual on, on this model so I need to make sure I know what I'm doing before we fire this baby up. And of course it's all sitting on this rather magnificent uh, keyboard and it is everything I ever expected them to be. It is heavy, it is very very solid. Um, it's made from uh, a coated wood, so this is absolutely solid wood. Um, and it has this, this kind of plastic coating and it has that same kind of speckled effect um, as, as the, the monitor. Here's the, the keypad, numeric keypad. The keys themselves, again this has been, we've, we've given this an initial clean, it could probably get uh, a little cleaner, we'll do that as we go through and dismantle. Some of the keys, as you see, kind of a bit sticky and some return nicely and others don't so we need to get that open and get in there and have a look and make sure that that's all okay down the end here uh, we've got the pitch bend which actually very well sprung seems quite good this mod wheel uh, it's kind of loosened up after I've had a little play with it uh, it's not so bad um, these kind of non-latching Switches they seem okay. They seem like the rotaries here. The, the number two, number three seem quite fine. Number one is solid, um, and we need to to get into there and have a look at that. Around the back, it's all looking pretty good. I can't really get the camera around there at the moment. The connectors, all the port connectors, are slightly tarnished uh, from some kind of it looks, looks like rust. Um, so we need to clean those up. Um, make sure they're all working. Let's see if that key has. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so it needs a bit of TLC. Um, down here uh, we have the mainframe. So as you can see, Peter has already removed some of the components, the the drive components that we have in there. So you'd have um, over here. So you see where this bracket is here. This is where you'd have the uh, hard disk drive and the tape streamer, and both of those are currently in this box here so this is the 
hard disk drive and it is heavy. I'll just plonk it there. That is huge. And I believe that's 190 megabytes. And you could probably fit about eight uh, terabyte drives in the space that that occupies. It's, it's rather large. Um, underneath in the box is the tape streamer. That's the tape streamer just in there. Just lift that up for you. So, tape streamer. Don't know the condition of that and whether that's fully operational. As you can see, we've also got um, a whole bunch of tapes. These are all 3M. They're all really good quality stuff. Some are unmarked. Some have got um, labels on with various sounds. Others, like this one, as you can see, have Series 3 complementary sound libraries. Um, it looks like um, you could subscribe to Fairlight Sound Library and they would send you tapes. So it would be really interesting to hear what's on there. So that's mainly tapes in there. There are actually some uh, sealed tapes actually, you know, still in the cellophane. Uh, so it's quite remarkable that they've, they've uh, stood the test of time. And then here we have a mass of floppies, um, some in hard cases. And we've got some here in just a, a, one of the, the paper bags. Um, very keen to know what is on this disc, given the name and the date, 10th of October 86. It was probably in the writing period of uh, the Seeds of Love album. So, with any luck, you never know. There are some very intriguing discs on here. Um, some with the name Brian Adams on, uh, others with Lloyd, and I know that Ian worked with Lloyd Cole and Commotions. Um, some with the word banana on, so I don't know whether that's anything to do with banana rama or what, but again, we'll hopefully get those when we get the floppy drive in, because the floppy drive lives in this slot here. Uh, we, we'll hopefully be able to investigate most of those. They, the discs do look like they're in very good condition. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed, and of course there's Ian's trademark uh, logo, which appears on um, pretty much everything, on the mainframe, on the alpha keyboard, and the music keyboard as well. So, it's in. Um, the cases were big and heavy, custom built, um, very impressive, but they're now stored in the garage, so they're out of the way. The Fairlight has now gone where I would, uh, or had been keeping my... Uh, Elise's Fusion and Core Prophecy. And uh, we're good to go. So I'm just waiting for delivery of parts from Australia. Um, Peter has sent those over. They're winging their way to me as we speak. So as soon as they come here, then we'll be able to um, start fitting those and hopefully start testing sooner rather than later. But there you go. Uh, Fairlight CMI Series 3, formerly owned by Ian Stanley of Tears for Fears. And uh, now here, awaiting loving restoration. Uh, come back next time and hopefully we'll have some more for you very, very soon. Thanks for watching.